Manning entered the ceramic subst substrate business in a most unusual way. During a meeting uh, with General Motors to discuss Corning's windshields, the GM CEO said that we're really not interested in your windshields, but we do have a problem with emissions control that you may be able to help us with. Congress had recently passed the Clean Air Act, which required all car companies to greatly reduce the emissions from their engines. At that point, Tom McAvoy, later to be president of Corning, pulled out a honeycomb composed of Circor, which was a, an expensive and specialty product. When the chairman of General Motors saw this, he was uh, very impressed. He could see its value as a substrate for a catalyst. And he said, if you can make this cheaply, and if it works, we'll be glad to buy it. Well, Dr. Bill Armistead, who was the director of R&D, was at the meeting, and when he returned to Corning, he put about half the laboratory on this project, realizing its uh, potential significance. But we had neither a material or a process at that time. We did have experience making ceramic radomes, which are composed largely of cordyrite. And this material can withstand great thermal shock and high temperatures, so it seemed ideal. Cordyrite has the extra advantage that it can be composed or batched as a mixture of clay and talc, very inexpensive materials. There was some pressure, particularly because we didn't have a process. It was then that scientist Rod Bagley came up with his dye extrusion process for extruding thin-walled honeycombs. And after a few short years, we were in full production with cordyrite honeycombs. Many of Corning's innovations required information from, from past uh, projects, even failures. Personally, I, I think it's always important to remember as a scientist that you're standing on the shoulders of your predecessors when we make progress, and this is a good example of that.